we might decide at nine o'clock tonight to grab a headlamp and a flashlight and come running out here. Are you just hanging out? Good morning, beautiful people. Uh, pardon the, the mess in here. We are full-blown uh, class prep time right now. Uh, there's meat getting seasoned. There's meat in the crock pot. There's meat on the stove. There's stock currently being canned. There's a lot going on in this kitchen and there's about to be a little bit more. So, uh, meat that's getting seasoned needs to go in the fridge, but we need room in the fridge. Yes. <laughs> there's currently bacon. You guys actually saw us cure that bacon right before the hurricane hit and it wasn't done curing yet but as soon as did we even have power yet when i smoked it we i think we had just gotten powered we had just gotten powered back so you know take it out get we can it put it in the fridge yeah we can put it in the <laughs> fridge so i smoked the bacon and it has been in the fridge for several days it needs to get cut up packaged and vacuum sealed and put in the freezer for storage uh and it would be kind of nice to have the entire shelf that all that bacon is hogging up so uh, me and Jack are going to get the slicer out, get the vacuum sealer out, and we're going to deal with said bacon right now. All right, here is our bacon, all smoked up. Ooh, Ooh that smells strong, doesn't it? <laughs> it smells strong. So I smoked, I hot smoked it this time. Usually I cold smoke. I tore down my little brick thing that I had made for cold smoking, and so basically that was my only option was to hot smoke. Nothing wrong with it. It's just a lot darker. Uh, and it has a very, very different smoky smell. It just smells like smoked meat, honestly. Not bad, just uh, very smoky. We leave the skin on, so as all of this meat is sitting in the smoker, it's getting all yucky where it's touching the uh, the grills on the skin side. And so we, we cut that off and then we slice it. So we're, me and Jack are gonna get these all trimmed up, get all the skin off, and then we'll get the slicer out and start slicing. There is our fat stacks of bacon. That, bacon. that represents about a pig's worth of bacon. Uh, we portion them out pretty big. Uh, each one of these will be an individual vacuum bag. Some of it, I think a couple of those slabs were actually guinea hog. Like, let's see, like this one, barely any meat on it, mostly fat. Uh, that was probably a guinea hog. The meat's a lot, I don't know, depending on the pig, like some guinea hogs will look like that. Whereas the feeder pigs will look more like this stuff. That's like traditional bacon. Beautiful. Yeah, that's some good bacon right there. Looks like classic bacon. Last one. All right. Wait. Uh, do, 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 Start. There we go. So people are gonna see this pile of like, honestly, there's still some, some bacon to be had in some of these chunks. The thing I have learned about doing bacon is we can just render all of that stuff right there uh, and just have bacon grease uh, or flavored lard, if you will. Bacon flavored lard. Really all I'm gonna do with that, I'm just gonna throw that all in a big vacuum bag and we'll stick it in the freezer. When we have time, we'll pull it out. You just throw it in a pot render it all down you can eat the meat out of it if you want uh, but we basically just use this bacon grease it's honestly like i like bacon grease uh for cooking eggs uh it adds a nice flavor to the eggs so uh, i'm actually going to clear a spot right here and this stack of bacon did not make it into the vacuum bags this stack of bacon is going immediately in the oven and we are going to have BLTs. Today is basically the last day for the garden. We had our first frost 
last night, you know, this morning. It was only supposed to be 40 degrees and it got down to 34. It's pretty hard frost. Um, there was, you know, light ice on everything. Hopefully after this, we have a have time. We're gonna get out, we're gonna pick peppers and whatever tomatoes are available. Uh, but it's kind of bittersweet. It is the end of garden season, but at the same time, I'm like, bring it on, shut the garden down. I'm ready. I'll be ready next spring to get back to it. This is not enough bacon for everybody. All right, my oven is warm and ready. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Open sesame, bacon in, and closed. Bake in, and we'll give it like I don't know. What do you think? Ten minutes? Yeah, about that. All right. I can already tell you right now that is not going to be enough bacon. I will probably steal one of these packs of bacon right here. I uh, see Jack's already planning. The idea of a BLT. Uh, sounds amazing right now. It's it's already after one o'clock, so it's gonna be a little late for lunch, but that's all right. I'm just gonna get this all turned over, back in there for another like three or four minutes, crisp it on both sides and it'll be done all right time for bacon bacon testing <laughs> uh grab you a piece of bacon let's talk about it oh okay right. i'm cool with this mm. whole plate's ruined i'll have to get rid of it mm. Mm. whole plate's ruined huh it's tougher than usual so usually i cold smoke our bacon and we've eaten cold smoked bacon for three years mm -hmm. And because, you know, current setup was what it was, I didn't cold smoke, I hot smoked. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes for, the smoke is a little different. Mm -hmm. Like a lot different. It tastes like liquid smoke. It, it does, it, yeah. It, it tastes like fake smoke. Maybe it's because we're, we've gotten used to uh, cold smoking. And then the texture of the bacon, it is a little tiny bit tougher. Mm -hmm. It's not as, I mean, we could cook it a little bit longer so it's more crispy. And then it yeah, would just could. break apart, but. Yeah, I think I like cold smoking a lot yeah. better. I mean, it's bacon. I'm not. It's mad. bacon. <laughs> it tastes like bacon. It smells like bacon. It looks like bacon. It's Must be bacon. Not untasty. Yeah, it's not. It's not untasty. It yeah. is quite delicious, but kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Having cold smoked for so long. Now I will say the last batch of bacon I did, uh, I have played around with different types of woods. I have always loved cooking on fruit woods cherry apple mm -hmm. you know whatever you got nut woods are good too pecan walnut like all of them are good i can't get almond out here i used to get almond all the time uh in the central valley of california because yeah. they grow a lot of almonds out there out here we have wild black cherry and it really imparts a wonderful smoke oh, so cherry good. flavor so good. and so i found that is my go-to wood didn't you use greenwood as well this time yeah all of my uh, my books that talk about the old ways of smoking meat you smoked on whatever produced the most smoke which that happens to be green wood so i threw a couple chunks of greenwood on there and it did change the smoke flavor change the smell i guess there's a lot more volatile oils yep. before it's dry and you can taste that it does taste very smoky yeah. yeah 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 not mad no. Like not mad at all. No, it's not bad. Everybody's judging if it's crispy enough. There's the stuff I cooked. This is the second round. That's a little wiggly for my taste. I like it a little crunchy. Crispy. Yeah, you want me to throw it back in? Uh, actually, I'll just eat this portion okay. if you guys want. I like it. Like all right, it? Jack likes it. All right. Buggy went and found tomatoes for me. These are like volunteer cherry tomatoes, plus what we affectionately call the driveway tomato. <laughs> there is a... I assume that's a German lunchbox that came up voluntarily in our driveway. It has had zero pest problems, no disease whatsoever. Uh, it has been the best, strongest producing tomato plant, period, hands down. Like, we've never grown such a good tomato. And so we've literally, like this one plant has kept us in tomatoes since we ripped out our tomatoes and planted uh, our fall crops. So uh, there's also, there's like one or two of them that came up in the uh, greenhouse. Uh, where they're not supposed to not mad either 
So we have enough cherry tomatoes, we can slice them up and we can have some BLTs. So I'm gonna start slicing some bread and some tomatoes. Ooh, that is fresh bread. One. All right, we got it out of that half a loaf. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. No way. No way. The driveway tomato plant strikes again. That's awesome. Just enough tomatoes. This will be mom's. All right, I'm gonna get all these built and then we're going to eat. That was fantabulous. Thank you. That was fantabulous? <laughs> fantabulous. <laughs> that, was that the first BLT you've ever eaten? I think that's the second. How was it? Delectable. <laughs> Corbin, who doesn't like tomatoes, how was the BLT? Delectable. So the bacon was pretty good too. But those driveway tomatoes, man. Right? Like, I think it's the rock yeah, dust it's that is our driveway. Um, I think we need to like skim some of that off and put in our garden beds. Because mm -hmm. that's it's minerals. Right. That's probably why that one's... So good. Like it makes some tasty tomatoes. Yeah. All right. We have one more thing that we got to take care of today. We got to go pick a whole bunch of peppers and close up the greenhouse because it's supposed to freeze tonight yeah so let's go do that that one unfortunately did not make it through the hurricane but it was already kind of iffy because of the sheer amount of like loofahs that were hanging off of it all right so this is what's left of our bell pepper bed all of the plants blew over in the hurricane there's a lot of peppers that we need to pick and there's a lot of rotten ones we're just going to do what we can and get everything picked doesn't look like the frost hit these very bad last night it was kind of a surprise frost but 34 is pretty cold yeah, yeah green everything. bell peppers is... I picked it because... Okay. I did it. No, we can use it. Tyler, catch. Good catch. Ooh, rotten. Ooh, good one. Not good one. Ooh, lady, you're going to get some cowboy candy this year. Oh, I know. I'm excited. We could maybe even make some jalapeno poppers. Yeah, we could. There's some really big jalapenos in here. And there's fresh bacon. There is? Yeah. There is fresh bacon. Buggy, look at all these. Yeah, that's a ton. I want to pick them all. Let's pick them all. All right. So, because, you know, it, this is a greenhouse, uh, all we really have to do is just close it up and it'll be safe. Uh, we've got vents in both ends, so I probably won't even have to roll up the sides unless we hit like 80 degrees. So we're just gonna get up here and close the sides and we'll, we won't have to harvest everything inside for a while. Technically we need to harvest these. These are kachuchas, but they are volunteer. Uh, and they are way spicier than they're supposed to be. Yeah. So we're not gonna worry about it. If they freeze and reseed, so be it. So this one is basically a red savina, which is very spicy. And then the kachuchas, well, these are so blasted spicy, they're not fun to eat anymore. They still taste the same. They're still fruity and delicious, but they go from like a level two spice to a level eight <coughs> spice. Because they crossbred with the red savinas last year. Yeah. So, <laughs> we're not worried about it. Nope. Nope. All right. That does it for what we wanted to harvest. There is some more stuff we could harvest. And who knows? It might be like every year we've been here, we might decide at 9 o'clock tonight to grab a headlamp and a flashlight and come running out here and harvest something. But, honestly, we're good. Yeah. So, yep. uh, that is going to do it for this video. And we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye.